Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Feed the Beast server. So guys, I have been busy making stained glass and putting the stained glass in these different hives, the things we were working on last episode. Uh, I have also went ahead and I did the lapis bees here and got these guys all filled up. I like the blue stained glass, this is pretty cool looking. Um, let's see, I have also off camera I made a new hive. And that is over here somewhere. There's just so many of these around. Is it this one? Yeah, it must be this one. Uh, this one right here, I made lead bees. I got these a long, long time ago. I haven't really done anything with them. But yeah, I have those filled up in there. And then this right here is our green stained glass. I can't say that I'm very happy with it. Uh, maybe I should have tried the lime green. I don't know. Uh, but... These are the emerald bees, and these guys are... Well, I guess it might be a lighter green. I could try making some of the lime green stained glass and see if I like that better. But yeah, this stuff I'm not too happy with. Also, I have found out... you. Well, like I said before, you can't silk touch this glass. And if you misplace it, it sucks. Because then you got to run all the way over to your carpenter and... Get, or not carpenter, thermionic fabricator. Get more of the stained glass made from over there. Uh, but what I did find out is you can actually push this glass with pistons, which helped me out. I misplaced a couple of pieces of this when I was adding these uh, other stained glass hives around. Um, I guess the orange, the yellow, the white, and the green, yeah. Um, I misplaced two or three pieces of glass while I was doing that. And I was able to push them back into place, which was very nice. Still kind of sucks that you have to do that and you can't just silk touch it, but what can you do? Okay, so I got a few things I want to work on today. Almost fell down there. I need one of these guys. Just one. That's all we need. And I want to do a mutation. So let's come over here. I want to put a fossil princess. And the fossil princess, these guys, or the fossil bees, I should say, make fossil combs which can be centrifuged into coal dust which is very awesome um i just got done breeding these so i have some of the drones in my inventory but i want to put this fossil bee with a rusty bee and that should end up making a pretty cool bee here so let's put that in there I believe these make steel bees i forget the name the actual name of the bee but yeah, I want to get those going real quick. Okay, so last episode at the very end, I was trying to grow a silverwood tree over here and it wouldn't happen. I used the hoe of growth on it like twice and it would not grow. Well, the problem is right here seems to be kind of like a dead spot with the aura. I know there's a node up there, almost right at the very peak that you can see. There's a small node up there, like 200V. And we have that one that's over here in the rainforest down underground. That is about 500 or 600. Uh, but what I have found out is the range of those, even though the goggles still show them. Like if I'm over here, it's still showing 300 or 200 or whatever it was. The range on those nodes is about 25% of how much V they can hold total. So that one up there, if that's 200, you know, it'd only be able to reach 50 blocks away. This one that's 600, be like 75 blocks away or whatever, um, or 150 blocks. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the problem. The goggles do show like the closest node, even if they can't. Even if, like, their magical power doesn't reach to where you are. So even though those goggles said that there was the aura there, it wasn't actually there. So that's why that tree would not grow. Okay, so let's see. Did we get... There we go. Fortified. All right. That's awesome. Put these bees back in here. I want to get a few of the drones going so I can get the serum for them. And fossilized comb. Ancient comb. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so what I did to fix the problem with the silver trees is I had to grow one just a little bit closer to over here where that bigger node is. 
And let me grab my goggles of revealing that I borrowed from DMAC. I still haven't done any Thalmcraft research at all. Goggles of revealing. And while we're here, let's grab the, um, oh, that hoe, what was it called? This guy. Yep, I actually, when I, re I uh, enchanted with a repair too. So this hoe, once you use it, it'll start drawing from the R around and it will repair itself. So, yeah, <laughs> I was worried about using too much of it last episode, but now it'll automatically repair itself, and it's fine. So I came over here, and I got a silverwood sampling. I planted it, and we're pretty close to that node that was over here. And first try, it grew. So let me pull out my goggles real quick. And there we go. We got a little itty-bitty node. Very cool. 100 aura. Um, it actually was about 50 or so when I grew it, when I grew that silverwood tree, and then I grew a second one, and the two nodes merged. Uh, but you can tell that this is a pure node, one that's grown from a silverwood tree, because of the little starburst swirly thing. So yeah, apparently these are pure nodes, and the pure nodes dispel flux, the, you know, the change in the aura. Uh, faster the flux is what causes like lightning and monsters and poison effects and other nasty stuff from happening So yeah, you want these pure nodes around these are good to have um, So after I grew this and I found out what the problem was I went back to the mess craft and I went and I chopped down a whole bunch more silverwood trees <laughs> And I started playing with it off-camera and right over here Bam we got a big node right there. So this node, this node is 1,054 V. So that is pretty awesome. And it's a pure node. So yeah. Uh, so what I want to do now that this one is 1,000, that means that it can travel about 250 blocks away. I should be able to now plant my silverwood tree, I think... That should be less than 250 blocks, I'm pretty sure. I should be able to plant that silverwood tree here and grow it. So, let's try that. Silverwood. Let's grab one of these guys. I haven't tried this yet, so it could fail again, but I really think this is going to work this time. So, let's do that. We'll do the hoe growth, and there we go. That fixes the problem. Now, as you can see, that the whole growth is jumping up and down in my hand. Uh, it's actually repairing itself. You can see the durability going up there. Um, yeah, so this node is repairing it, and it's drawing aura or whatever, the V, from my large node over here. So you can see the little star shooting right over here to repair this one or replenish it. Um, so if I come back over here, it should stop sending those stars over there, I think because it's not drawing aura from that anymore. Yeah, there goes the stops. So yep, yeah, that is pretty awesome. So this says uh, flex of none, and it's still sending stuff over here. Did this one not fill up? Ah, it's at 67 out of 81. Now it's at 79. thought I saw something flash right there. <laughs> Maybe it was the new, oh, it must've been the silverwood leaves, okay. Yeah, so this is actually a pretty good one. 81 from one silver tree. I guess that was a pretty large tree, though. So, yeah. Uh, what I plan on doing is chopping this tree down, uh, growing another one here, and just continually chopping it down, growing another one, and getting the node bigger and bigger. So I can have a couple of pure nodes around here that will provide a lot of V and be able to dispel any flux in the uh, atmosphere. Uh, pretty easily. Okay, so let me go to sleep. Sleep till day. And I actually have another bee that I want to work on. A pretty cool bee. So let's see. If I come over here, I want... Yep, I want an ender drone. I want... It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take a Meadows Princess. And I need to eat some food so I can sprint again. Okay, there we go. Ender, or a, uh, what was it, Meadows Princess? Yep, this doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal a Glittering Queen out of here. Oh, actually, yeah, I will steal that. And I will put the Meadows Princess in there. So that bee will, 
It'll mate with the drones and become a, a glittering princess again. Ooh, these things are only giving me one back. I'm going to have to doctor these up so they give me more children. Look at that steel comb. Very awesome. Okay, so I want to put this glittering queen in here. Kill it off really quickly. And then I want to mate the princess with this ender bee. And that should give us the valuable bees. This is something why I wanted... Uh, Alright, this is something that I've wanted since I started breeding these bees for a very long time. The valuable bees are the ones that give you platinum. And platinum is very useful. You can take platinum. I believe you put it in an, uh... Oh, what is it? The... Industrial Electrolyzer? I can't remember. But you can do something with that platinum. And it, you can turn it into... Maybe it's a centrifuge. And you can turn it into... Uh, iridium, which is awesome. So that means we can get iridium from the bees. Okay, so I have the glittering princess in here. Let's put this ender bee in here. And hopefully this works. I believe it should because the stance should just be of that of this glittering queen. Uh, it's mated with the end bee. And if all goes well, we should theoretically get our valuable bees, which will be awesome. Okay, so let's see if this works. I hope so. <laughs> and there we go, guys. There's a valuable princess and a golden comb. That's not what I want. <laughs> but yeah, valuable. That is so awesome. So now we can get platinum from the bees and steel. Platinum we can turn into iridium. And the steel is just because I want steel. Um, actually, there was a reason why I wanted to get that steel. And it's over here because of these oil bees that I have, the distilled ones that are producing my oil. I decided I wanted to bump up my power production from over here. So I went down and I added just a few more steam boilers. So now we got a total of 24. Wait, no, 12. <laughs> what was I thinking, 24? We got a total of 12 steam boilers down here. And I think these should pretty much all be heated up by now. Uh, these guys are still heating up and yeah, these are heating up. They're almost done uh, But yeah, they <laughs> have been drawing just a little bit of fuel out of this iron tank But I'm pretty sure we're still making enough oil here to sustain these and probably even more um, So yeah We have a lot of power down here now and that uh, required a lot of steel And I had no way of really making steel Um I mean, I can do the blast furnace, but that kind of sucks. Uh, I, yeah, I think I just want to get the steel dust so I can take that, put that into the furnace. I think it only takes five seconds in an industrial blast furnace uh, to turn it into the steel ingots. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay, guys, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to doctor up these bees, try and get the serums, and we will be right back. Alright guys, so I just went ahead and I chopped down that silverwood tree, and this is the little resulting pier node that's left over. And that silverwood tree actually gave me two saplings, which is very cool. So I will plant a new sapling right below our node. You see we have an R of 81 here. As soon as I grow this, it's going to spawn a new node. And at that point, the two nodes should merge and we should have, you know, over a hundred aura at this one node. It'll get just a little bit bigger. So let's grow another tree and check that out. Okay, it says now... Oop, <laughs> that was weird. Uh, we now have an aura of 113. Uh, but when the nodes combine, it does create a little bit of flux. You can see that the F thing in the lower left hand corner says minimal, which isn't bad, but as you keep doing this over and over again, You'll end up with high flux, and then you can cause thunderstorms, things like that. Uh, so you can, you know, do this pretty easily. Just grow them and let them combine. Then you can wait for the flux to go away if you're worried about it. Or you can just kind of deal with the effects of the flux. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do. But, yeah, this will be a project that I'm going to be working on off camera. Just letting, or just continually growing these trees, letting the nodes merge. I'm going to have to go back to Mistcraft and collect a few more saplings to uh, get it the same size as that one over there. Uh, but I would like a few more of these larger pier aura nodes around here just so I have plenty of V around and it can get rid of flux faster. Okay. 
Uh, so I did end up getting the Valuable Species Serum. It only took one or two tries, I believe. And I need to grab yet another one of the... Oh, I guess I will grab that Rocky Princess right there. Very good. Yeah, so I found out there's some pretty cool things you can do once you have the Extra Bees mod and you have some bees that are already been bred up in the way you like. Uh, it doesn't really matter which bee I take. I think I will take... One of these lapis bees. It doesn't really matter to me. I will stick that bee in there. They will mate up. That princess will again uh, turn into. It'll turn into lapis and it'll all work itself out eventually. So let's kill off this lapis queen real quick. I want the princess and I want one of the drones. These bees have been modified so they have pretty much the perfect stats. And what's great about the extra bee machines, if you have like the species serum, you can take any bee, inject it with the serum, it'll change its type from lapis to the valuable, but it'll keep all of its other traits, which is awesome. So that's a lot of work that you don't have to worry about with these bees. So if we take the lapis princess and, oh, I guess I can't put that back in there. Lapis princess and a lapis drone. Let's go put that down, shoot it up with this valuable serum and check it out so you just put uh yeah you put the bees in there and you put the serum and after i think it takes about two shots per bee uh they should turn into the valuable bees and have all the good treats so i will see you in a minute all right guys there we go uh that took a little bit more than two shots per it was like three on one four on the other i think but um, yep, not too bad. So now we got some valuable bees here, and these should have all of the good traits, if, uh, if I believe this is correct. Yeah, we have the valuable bee that now has the longest, fast speed, uh, flowers, fertility of four, and let's see over here. Yeah, all of these traits, and yeah, it does the, the platinum comb specialty, so that is awesome. These two bees right now are ready to go. They've already been mass produced. And I will probably set that up at some other time. Let me throw them in. Where am I keeping my good ones? I think right in here. I will throw my valuable bees in here. And then I have just purified the fortified species serum. So this would be for the steel bees. I will go ahead and do this at another time as well. So yeah, we are all set on those bees, which is awesome. Okay, so I... Oop, we got a wisp. Is this a good wisp or a bad wisp? Either way, they all should die. That looks like a friendly one that isn't going to attack me, but... Come here, wisp. <laughs> and you are dead. Let me get your essence. Very cool. Okay, and... Yeah, let's come over here to the node, and let's throw another silver wood sampling on there. I want to get these things going so we can have a couple of big nodes around here. So we'll growth it. And there we go. So now this 113 is going to turn into a 135. Not bad, not bad. Okay. So yep. Um, that's another step in the process here. Did I? Oh, I thought I saw another wisp. It was just the, the little particles coming over to the other <laughs> to that other node there. Alright. So one other thing that I want to do today is the last episode we started setting up that room downstairs with some of the applied energistic stuff. Uh, we have all the dust being crafted down there. Uh, what I want to do is set up a way to auto process the dust. I want to smelt that dust automatically. So if we look at our remote, whoop, I guess we could throw it on the ground too, but if we <laughs> look at this thing and let's type dust. All right, so you can see we have so much dust here um, lots of copper, lots of bronze, well, not <laughs> quite as much, I just set those bronze up, but, like, the silver, the tin, iron is a big one that I want to get auto-smelting, and there's a tiny pile of steel dust that we just threw in there, yeah, lead is something I want to get going to, uh, so I want to start auto-smelting that stuff as it comes in, or at least so I can say, okay, smelt up, you know, another stack. Uh, I haven't really made any progress back here since the last episode, uh, but I did set up this right here. This is only taking in the lapis combs because the problem that we were having before is when I centrifuged the lapis combs over here in my wall of centrifuges, um, there's some kind of a bug, I guess, when you have 
the routers automatically pull out the lazarite dust it leaves behind the dust and it gives it like a damage value of zero or something or negative one i don't know but basically it turns it into an infinite item where you can right click it and get all of the lazarite dust that you ever wanted to very cheaty um but the the problem would be is that it leaves it in here so eventually uh, if I leave that stuff going long enough, all of these would fill up with that lazarite dust and I wouldn't be able to process any combs. Uh, so that problem doesn't happen if you extract from the centrifuge using a buildcraft pipe and an Artarka gate. So that's what I have going right here. Uh, it just, uh, let's see, it's taking the, <laughs> the lapis combs. Yeah, you can see one's going right now. It's taking the lapis combs using the export bus, putting it into here, centrifuges it. And then it puts it into the blue, blue, blue chest. This is the one that just gets sucked. All the items that get put in here gets, just get sucked back into the network. Um, but yeah, I want to set up a way to auto process or auto smelt all of those ores. And in order to do that, I need a powered furnace. <laughs> Let's see. I could steal the one up here for now. I don't think I have... What does it even take to make a powered furnace? I don't even remember. Let's see, a powered furnace... Some brick, machine frame, reception coil, copper. Yeah, I don't think I have the stuff ready to do that. So let's go ahead and just steal. Whoop, let me take the stuff out of there. Let's steal this powered furnace. I'm probably going to have to end up making like 20 of those things. Um, I will put those right in there. Okay. So yeah, let's come downstairs. And I want to try and get this hooked up if possible. Okay, I think the first thing we're going to do is try and get the iron to be auto-smelted. Now, I'm not sure if I should move these guys over a little bit and put the powered furnaces like right here so they're kind of like two rows. Or if I should just have the powered furnaces down here being its own little section. Let's see. I think for now we will just stick them down here and just see how this is going to work. I will use one of these for now. Put that there. Okay. Now, this is a little bit more difficult because you need to have, well, actually, I'm not sure if it needs to be on top, but you need one of these interfaces. Oh, I have them already crafted, very good. Yeah, you need one of these interfaces, and I think they have to go on top. Um, we want the blue for the powered furnace to be coming from the top, so we don't want it there, there, or there, um, or there. So, let's see, yeah, we want the blue coming down, and then we want to extract from this power furnace, and I believe in order to do that, this needs to be set to the no color. So you have the red and you have the blue, but yeah, we want this to be set to no color. Okay, Oop, that was actually the wrong thing. I want this on the back. Yeah, right there. Okay, so now I need an import bus. Yep, let's grab just one of those. We stick the import bus here. All right, so we are making progress. So now I just need to hook these two up with a wire or a cable. I need an ME cable. Let's grab a few of those. I think I gotta run the cabling around too. Uh, so let's see. Yep, and then here I can stick in a pattern and I can tell it to give it one iron dust and you should expect back out an iron ingot. So let me, I still haven't made a proper way down here. I really haven't done much work since last episode. Um, so let's see. I suppose I can just run this directly over. So we do this, this. Although that's going to <laughs> be right in the way of that opening I just made. That's fine, that's fine. I can make a new opening. Okay, so those are hooked up, so now I just need to make a pattern so this thing knows what to do. Oh, I also need to run energy to it, don't I? So how am I going to do that? I think for now, until I get a whole array of those things hooked up, I'm just going to put an energy tesseract on it. So let me grab one of these. Whoops. And we'll just stick an energy tesseract right below it just to provide it some power, just to get this going for now. So receive only, we'll put on MJ1 and click that. So this thing should now be powering up, is that right? Yes it is, very good. Okay, so let's poke another hole and get out of here. Okay, so now I need to make a pattern. I need to tell this thing uh, what we want it to do. So yeah, we need to tell it 
if we we, <laughs> we need to tell it basically that you can get one iron ingot if you send that powered furnace over there and iron dust. So let's see if we can get that going. So let's do pattern. Let's grab one of these. Let's grab iron. Good, I have an iron ingot. And I have an iron dust. Awesome. So you come over here to the pattern encoder and we put the blank pattern here. We say if we, if you get one iron ingot, um, no, let's see, no, 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 this is, this is wrong. Uh, we want it to say with one iron dust, you can get one iron ingot, but you can see right here, it says a tiny pile of iron dust. Well, we can override that and manually place that in there and encode that. So now it says crafts one iron ingot with one iron dust. So that's awesome. Okay, so let's go stick that pattern down below into that interface, and then we should be able to see the crafting recipe for it. Okay, so if we stick this right there, Awesome, and if everything is correct, uh, this should be automatically pulling out of the furnace. If I can click on it, yeah, I think that should be automatically pulling out. This will put the items in. So let's see if this is part of the network now. So if we search for iron, and we do craft only. Yeah, we can craft iron. So let's say craft 10 of those, begin. Okay, so now the light on the furnace is on, and you can see, oh yeah, that's awesome. We have uh, 10 iron dust was in there and it's taking the iron back out of the furnace and sticking in our in, or into our network. So if we look at this again, we can see this should be going up every time it smelts. 251, 252, very awesome. Okay, so now we could do something <laughs> a little bit better. Let's see, I want it to smelt. Yeah, these are craftable iron. Let's craft up, oh, I don't know, 30 more. Begin. Yep, there we go. There's 30 more in there. Very awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to set up in a whole array of these things for all of the different ores. And, you know, while this is good, I don't know if it would be worth it to, you know, not auto smelt all these things up just to leave it in the dust form and then smelt it as we need it or if I should just set these up to automatically put the dust in the furnace and just turn all of the dust into the ingots. I'm not quite sure uh, which way is better. But this is definitely cool, I do like this. <laughs> so yeah, let me just go ahead, up, go ahead and set up a whole array of these furnaces and we will be right back. All right guys, so I just spent a lot of time here uh, building a whole bunch of these powered furnaces getting all the interfaces hooked up and all the wiring back here done. Now what's great about the AE system is once you connect one to the network, you don't have to run wires to the other blocks. As long as they're touching, they're all part of the network. Uh, unfortunately down here we needed an import bus for every single one of these, so I had to run the wires all the way down here. But this interface is connected because this interface is connected over here. Very awesome. Now I only have the first six or seven of these hooked up. And I have room for expansion over here, but that's what it's going to look like when it's pretty much done. And right now it looks like we got a, you know, a nice little pattern here. Got that inner chest in the center and about the same amount of fabricators as uh, furnaces. But this will all change eventually, I'm sure, as we add more things that need to be auto-smelted or whatever. But for now, it looks alright. Uh, it does look kind of bland and gray compared to these that look all blue and shiny. But that's alright. All right, so what I want to do is let's go down here and I have power converters hooked up. Now, when I showed you the new steam boilers that I had over at the oil area earlier, I never really explained that fully. I pulled out all of the industrial steam engines and now we are using liquid test racks to move all of the steam around. So wherever I need power, I'm going to hook up these power converters and just use um, not an item test or not an energy test rack, but a liquid test rack to provide steam. So I just made a steam provide or a steam consumer. We got an energy bridge, and then this is a build craft provider. Okay, so what I need to do is just get a liquid tesseract. We will put steam into that system. Let's see, liquid tesseract, and do that. And we want to set to owner only, receive only, steam, bam. Okay, so now. Yeah, this is 
you know, all of the power that we need is coming from there. So we can take that out of here. And yeah, this is all hooked up. That's got a full charge on it. Very cool. Okay. So now let's check this out in action. I have all of the patterns put in here and all the different things that we need. So I want to try a full test. So let's do this. Let's do craftable. Let's do ingot. There we go. We got a whole bunch of different ingots we can craft now. So let's do a stack of each. Stack of copper. Let's do a stack of gold. Stack of iron. A uh, stack of lead. Let's do a stack of silver. And finally, a stack of tin. Oh, looks like we got a problem. What's this? Why is this not working? One bronze. Oh, did I not do bronze? There's bronze. Let's do stack begin. Oh, yeah, I must have clicked something wrong. Okay, so now each of these has a full stack. Oh, we're getting a little bit of server lag. That's weird. Yeah, this is so awesome. We can just tell it to craft a stack or at least smelt a stack from anywhere in our base. And we will be able to access those ingots pretty much from wherever. So this is very, very cool. Now, something like I said, uh, I'm not sure if this is really necessary or if I should change these interfaces just to import buses and have it automatically pipe in all of the different dust that we're getting to these power furnaces so they're automatically smelted all of the time without having to wait. Uh, that's something I'm going to have to think about if I really want to do that or not. Uh, but this way is great. And did this have anything in it? Ah, tin. Let's do tin. Where is the craft... Ooh, we got two different crafts here. Um, is it this one? Nope, that was the wrong one. I got to figure out which one is the tin that I want and which one is the tin I do not want. Whoop, tin. Okay, so let's try making this one begin. Aha, there we go. And I'm not quite sure. Oh, it makes the one with the darker. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure that one out. Okay, so let's look at this. And we are using... Only 15 MJ. That's actually not too bad for all that smelting. Very, very cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Got a lot of stuff done. Uh, I got a lot more stuff that I need to do with those bees. Get those all hooked up. Build some more hives to put them in. And figure out how we're going to make the iridium. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.